Hello, it's Robert here and fact checking, helping you if you're scared and of many things. And this is just something I forgot to say in my last video about the false vacuum decay. I, I mentioned taking um, blue beads out of a bag and, I, and I, I forgot to explain what that was all about. And that was when I was talking about remembering your ancestors. So if you go back and back and back and imagine that you have a bag it's got a very vast number of uh, of uh, beans in it, and and all you know is that these beans can be either blue or red. And you don't know if there are any. Um, you know they're all going. If there's a bean, any bean in there is going to be either blue or red, but you don't know if it's got any blue ones or any red ones when you first start. So you just reach in and pick out the bean and look at its colour, and then you pick out another one and another one. So now, suppose you um, pick 10 beans and they're all blue. Then at that point, you will already begin to get some confidence. This is likely to be a bag of blue beans. And then now, suppose you get to a thousand. You think, well, this is looking very much like a bag of blue beans. And it seems unlikely there are many red beans in this. And then you get to a million. A million is a very, very long time. So you get to a million of these, and uh, that you, you'd have probably spent a year picking them out by then or something, unless you're doing it re really quite fast. And and at that point, they're all are blue. And at that point, you think, well, this is probably almost certainly a bag entirely of blue beans. If there are any red beans there, it must be very, very rare indeed. And so you have a great deal of confidence that the next bean you, bean you pick out will be blue. And then now we've got to 13.8 million beans that you picked out and they've all been blue. So then it is completely reasonable and entirely sensible to say, OK, I expect the next bean to be blue. And this is scientific reasoning. It's called Bayesian inference, which is a way of uh, of explaining this, of, of, um, of formalizing this. There's a whole mass of it, of how to do Bayesian reasoning. And I know people I come across this also with other things, like with uh, nuclear war. So you get people saying, well, look, we, we've had um, how many years it is, over half a century certainly, uh, without a nuclear war. And so the people make this false reasoning. They say, okay, we've had so many years without a nuclear war, that means that we're running out of time and, and we're bound to have a nuclear war because the more time there is without a nuclear war, then that means we're, uh, we, we're, we're closer and closer to having one. That is not correct reasoning. If you don't know anything else about it, all you know about each year is that there wasn't a nuclear war, then 50 years without a nuclear war gives you a great deal of confidence that next year will also be a year without a nuclear war. In reality, we know the world has got more peaceful, it's got more controlled, it's got much more um, intercommunication between countries. There's a great deal of many precautions. In the early years, there were things they didn't they didn't know about things that could go wrong in, 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 in detecting things uh, coming your way and so on. And so actually, we are a lot safer now than we were during the Cold War in that respect. Uh, but if all you had was, and, and then, of course, that is just the, that's the worst case that it would be, uh, that, that it's just that, uh, that all we've got is that evidence, we've got lots of evidence that we are very safe from a nuclear, from not having a nuclear war. So it's way, way beyond that. But that that is valid reasoning. So that is the right way to reason, is to say that the more times, the more years you have without something happening, without any, if there's no other evidence you have except it not happening, the more confidence you have it's not going to happen. So these things, they don't build up, it's the other way around. The, the, all the years without something uh, give you increasing evidence and increasing confidence that the next year is not going to have that thing either. 
and same with all these 13.8 million millennia, then all those uh, millennia without a false vacuum decay, without the universe vanishing, <coughs> that gives you a huge amount of confidence and that is what Tommy was explaining in its scientifically valid reasoning and he used this in his scientific paper where he deduces from this that you know, because certain things um, haven't happened then we can rule out those theories because according to them it should have happened long ago. So that's, uh, that's valid reasoning and that's what I was talking about there and so I'm just going to upload this as a supplementary video uh, just to fill in a gap that I noticed when playing back that video I just made. <coughs> and so hopefully this, this helps you. I'll put a link to the other video. I'll put a link to this video in that one and I'll link both of them to this uh, debunk. This, this is the fact check and no realistic possibility for false vacuum decay. Your que answers questions answered by an expert, Tommy Markham, who is an expert or who researched into false vacuum decay for many years and he knows what he's talking about.